125. Subversion of Words. Calcedon Report number 18, March the 1st, 1967. Few things are more readily and easily subverted than words. The subversion of words is accordingly a major fact in all subversive activity. The word republic has an important meaning for conservative Americans and is a hope for many peoples of the world. The communists adopted it for their order, the USSR, Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. The word love has been reinterpreted to mean revolutionary action and the subsidising of all kinds of evil, and Christians are told they are not showing biblical love if they fail to support Marxist social action. But perhaps the most subverted word of all is God. One of the first things we need to recognise when we talk about God is that virtually all religions are atheistic. As Christians, for us, religion means God. But this is true of very little else than Christianity, if of any other religion. Humanism is the religion of humanity, the worship of man. Animism, the worship of primitive peoples, has no God. Shintoism has a multitude of kamis, divine ancestors, but no God. Buddhism is an atheistic religion. For it, nothingness is ultimate. Hinduism also sees nothingness as ultimate, and the goal of reincarnation is to escape karma into eternal nothingness. Confucianism, a philosophy which became a religion, has no god. Taoism holds to an ultimate relativism. Nothing is absolutely right or wrong, since all things are relative. Greek religion and Roman religion has no god. Their many, quote, gods, end quote, were, like men, creatures born of chaos and destined to pass away. Greek philosophy talked of a first cause or god, but this was not a person, but an original source. Whether atoms or something else, none could say. The religion of the Germanic peoples again was godless. The, quote, gods, end quote, they talked about were creatures out of chaos who were simply ahead of man in their developments. Apart from biblical religion, the religion whose faith includes a god is Mohammedanism, but its concept, borrowed from the Bible, quickly was dissolved into an idea of fate on the one hand and mystical pantheism on the other. Mormonism does not hold to the god of scripture. Instead, it holds to many gods who are all men who have graduated in rank and Mormonism is a form of ancestor worship under its superficially biblical language. Judaism grew out of the rejection of Jesus Christ and steadily became humanism, and the Talmud is essentially the exposition of humanism under the facade of Scripture. There is thus actually no true theism or worship of the absolute God apart from Orthodox Christianity. The word God, however, is widely used in order to nullify the gap between biblical and non-biblical religions, between Christianity and humanism. The churches today are quite vocal about the believer's duty to God, but they clearly take the name of God in vain because it is humanism and revolution which they proclaim, not the gospel. The Death of God school of thought is perhaps the most honest group on the religious scene today. They honestly declare that they have a double purpose. First, they want to destroy all faith in the God of the Bible, the triune God, and to destroy with this faith the whole structure of moral law which comes from God. If there is no God, then there is no law, and anything goes. Man is his own God and his own law. Therefore, the death of God thinkers want to, quote, liberate, end quote, man from God and morality by declaring that God is dead and man is, quote, free, end quote. Second, by their own statements, they look forward to a, quote, rebirth, end quote, of, quote, God, end quote, this time as a united world order. 
The one world order of brotherhood and socialism is this new God waiting to be born, and the death of God thinkers want to stimulate this birth by furthering revolutionary thought and action. By and large, the established religious leaders and churches are equally radical but less honest. They try to delude people into believing that it is still Christianity they preach by using all the old language with a new revolutionary meaning. One of the major forms of this deception is neo-orthodoxy, that is, a seeming orthodoxy. But the churches of today are promoting revolution and calling it Christianity. It is the purpose of the church of today to murder God and the church in the name of fulfilling their Christian calling. The support given to revolutionary activity is heavily borne by the churches. Sololinsky is one among many who depends on the churches for his support. The graduates of seminaries become revolutionists, both in and out of the churches. At the University of California at Berkeley, Mario Savio originally was destined for the Jesuit order. Stuart Albert planned to be a rabbi. Steve Hamilton went from Wheaton College to Bishop Pike to civil rights protests and university activities. He represented the University Church Council in 1964 in the free speech movement. Patrick Taggart led in Youth for Christ activities and was a counsellor in Billy Graham's last Los Angeles crusade. With Lois Mergenstrom, who became the nude, quote, living altar, end quote, in a Satanist wedding in San Francisco, Tuesday, January the 31st, 1967, Taggart is a leader in the Satan worship cult there and in the propagation of, quote, liberal, end quote, ideas. Many groups use the name of God, but for all except those who hold to Orthodox Christianity, God is the enemy who must be destroyed. These revolutionists hate God, because God means that there is an ultimate judge over all men, and an ultimate right and wrong in the universe, an inescapable truth, apart from which all else is a lie. These revolutionists are out to destroy not only God, but all language, since language still reflects the idea of a right and wrong. Friedrich Nietzsche called for a new language to express this new faith, a mode of communication in which the falseness of an opinion is not for us any objection to it. Man must live beyond good and evil, beyond all law, and deny that there are any thou shalt nots. Love, as self-indulgence, is his only law. In this new order, Nietzsche said, it is necessary to recognise untruth as a condition of life, having as much, quote, right, end quote, as a truth, and perhaps more necessary. This philosophy undergirds both church and state today. Churchmen and politicians lie to us for our good and with no sense of wrongdoing apparent. The, quote, God, end quote, of these men is the state. Georg Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel, 1770-1831, the spiritual father of Marx, Kierkegaard, Dewey, Sartre and others, and the grandfather of Marxism, Pragmatism, Fabianism, Existentialism and much else, said, The state, in and by itself, is the ethical whole, the actualization of freedom, this means that the state is God and is the source of all law and morality. Hegel said, The march of God in the world, that is what the state is. The state is thus God walking on earth, and men must bow down to statism or be punished as evildoers, because the state is a fulfilment of man and of man's law. This is the issue then. The state versus God. Christ versus Caesar. Every man who supports a church which is not proclaiming Orthodox Christianity is supporting Antichrist and is in the camp of statism. These churches talk about God, 
but they mean the state. They speak of Christ as Saviour, but by salvation they mean socialism. Language has been subverted, and first of all, the word God. We cannot counteract the subversion of our day without beginning at its root cause. We need to be, quote, honest to God, end quote. And, as Dr. J.I. Packer, an Anglican scholar, remarked in criticising the book Honest to God by John A.T. Robinson, Bishop of Woolwich, The man who is honest to God is a man who listens to God's word and lets it have its way with him, not evading its substance, nor deflecting its application one iota. The Bishop of Woolwich has another God and another Saviour than the Bible offers. As against these false definitions of God, the Bible reveals the true God to us. Long ago, the larger catechism summarised the biblical statements thus. Question 7. What is God? Answer. God is a spirit, in and of himself infinite in being, glory, blessedness and perfection, all-sufficient, eternal, unchangeable, incomprehensible, everywhere present, almighty, knowing all things, most wise, most holy, most just, most merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. Question 8. Are there more gods than one? Answer. There is but one only, the living and true God. Question 9. How many persons are there in the Godhead? Answer. There be three persons in the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one true, eternal God, the same in substance, equal in power and glory, although distinguished by their personal properties.